Hello, good evening and good morning, everyone. Welcome to My Avi Fences. It's great to be here. This is unusual hour for our webinar. Most of the time we do them in the evening, but as we are connecting to uh, with Lucy and Louise, who are from Australia, it's obvious that this is the perfect time for us and for them. So I'm very happy to have you both here and I'm really looking forward to this event. This is a different event. This is a special event. Uh, as you know, we mostly focus on medical ones, but we definitely want to explore that other part, which is definitely um, important. So Lucy Lines and Louise Suitsky is with us. Hello, uh, girls. It's great to have you. How have you been? How are you? Thank you for joining us today. It's a pleasure. Thanks for having us. <laughs> Thank you so much. I'm so excited. I think we're, we're here to discuss a really important topic. So um, I'm really excited to deep dive and, and see what comes of the conversation. Definitely. And of course, yep. before we start our conversation, there is no presentation for today, uh, but Louise and Lucy will walk you through what can you do, how to improve and how to feel better during Christmas. We know that this is a wonderful time, but it can be also a tough time for sure. Uh, so they are here to support you. Uh, so remember, uh, you can also share your feelings, you can share your uh, questions. So anything that's on your mind, you can put this in the chat. Remember, it's all anonymous. So uh, feel free to, to simply uh, use this time and ask anything that's on your mind. Lucy and Louise definitely know uh, how it is, so they will be able to help you. They have done it uh, their, themselves, I'm sure. And uh, this is uh, definitely uh, a great opportunity for you to um, to learn a bit more, but more also to to feel the positive vibes, hopefully as well. That's our aim today. Uh, so thank you so much, Louise and Lucy. I think that we can start our event. And just one more thing, please remember it's all anonymous so you can share and ask your questions um you can do it now or later on of course it's up to you but now we will go uh to lucy and louise and what they uh have uh, to share with you today thank you thank you thank you so much carolyn um my name is louise wiki i am a fertility empowerment coach and fertility in the workplace advocate and um, something people find really extraordinary about me, I guess, is the fact that I gave birth to three children in three years. And I guess the reason they find that so extraordinary is because I battled infertility for six years before becoming a mum. And it was through this life-changing transformational journey that I found my true passion and my purpose. And I guess that's where my story and my business was born. And I really support women's mindset transformation. I work with them to really understand what the stories are that they're telling themselves regarding their fertility journey and how that could be preventing them from moving forward. You know, all this stress, anxiety, fear, overwhelm, grief, all of these emotions, they keep us stuck and able to move forward. So I really work with my clients to understand how to change this story and transform this story for the better. And you know, I guess for me, um, you know, Christmas time was always a really triggering time and it is for every single one of my clients. I'm sure it is for you as well, Lucy. And um, yeah. so I think, you know, we're here to talk about a really important subject. Um, so I'll let Lucy introduce herself and then we can get into it. Amazing. So I'm Lucy Lyons and I am a former clinical embryologist uh, turned fertility educator and IVF patient advocate. So I sp have spent 23 years working inside the fertility industry throughout Europe and Australia. And um, the first 17 years of that were inside the fertility clinics and um, it gave me a really interesting perspective on IVF. And obviously having worked as a clinical embryologist, I define myself by the fact that I'm an embryologist. I love the, the science and the amazing things that we can do with IVF. But having also worked within the sales and marketing departments of some of these businesses and in some of the adjunct businesses that work together with the IVF clinics, um, I, I've recognised that it's massively big business and it's really easy for people to get lost inside that and to 
you know, when, when you combine that with the lack of general knowledge that people have about how their bodies work and how, how reproduction works, it's kind of a perfect storm for people to be taken advantage of. And so I've made it my purpose to really support people to understand their bodies and to really explore their options and, and understand what their options are so that they can navigate their way through the very big business of IVF. Um, hand in hand with that, I uh, also had my own experience of infertility. So it took me um, about 10 years to, to build my family uh, with two children and multiple miscarriages and, and infertility in between. So I had my second child at 44. Um, and I know looking back that the things that I did in the six months before he was conceived made a significant difference to the the the, the whole reason he's here um, but in those 10 years there were lots of Christmases there were lots of promotions at work that I didn't put my hand up for there were lots of trips overseas that I didn't um, you know that I cancelled or, or didn't go on and and so I managed to teach myself a whole lot of tools to manage that so it's kind of coming at it from both angles really what what is actually the science and what do we need to understand in order to be able to take the steps we need to take and how can we manage and support ourselves throughout all of that as well? So that's that's kind of who I am and what I do. I love that. Um, you know, I think <laughs> that, you know, we both add such different perspective to the fertility journey, but I think, you know, it, it, they say it takes a village to raise a child and I think a lot of the time it takes a village to make a child. So... You know, you really have to look at your fertility holistically from all angles. Yep. There is so much emphasis, I think, you know, and you all agree, Lucy, when you when you start to, to when you think about you, you go to the doctor and you say, I'm, I, I want to have a baby. They go, OK, well, you need to go and do some blood tests and you need to do this. And, yep. you know, are your levels right? And are you taking, you know, is your weight within a, you know, a certain range? Are you doing the right amount of exercise? But there's not a really a, a focus on the holistic um side of fertility it's really just yeah. a one angle approach and I think that that's where a lot of people end up in a very long journey unnecessarily where in the in the beginning if they had have been given the correct advice and and and, and looked at their fertility holistically then potentially there could have been a lot of heartache that that could have been well wow. yeah and it, i mean it is it's something that i talk to my clients about a lot is you know they come to me for the science obviously and they come to me with numbers and data and statistics and things that we can calculate and measure and control and i'm i, I love that i'm all about that i'm i'm a scientist so that, that's sort of you know that's where i sit but it's also where most of us as human beings feel really comfortable because we're used to everything having a recipe or a pathway or a you know I couldn't tell you how many times I say this if you want to buy that house on the hill over there you know that it's going to sell for six hundred thousand dollars so you know what six hundred thousand dollars means in how much you need to work or borrow or whatever there's a pathway to everything you want and you know you want something you just have to work hard enough and want it bad enough and you can get it so people come to me with lots of data and numbers and statistics and, and cell numbers and embryo counts and whatever, and I love going through that, but I always make them turn around and look at the stuff that we can't calculate, we can't measure, and we can't control and work out a way that we can manage that bit too. And and unfortunately, lots of my clients dissolve into tears at that point because like, no one's ever really acknowledge that I'm like but this is this is trauma you know when you can't have your family the way you plan to and you know you grow up thinking that you're going to grow up and meet Mr Wright and have three babies and they're going to be two years apart and you're going to call them this that and so you know you have this plan and when it doesn't work that way you think oh, well I obviously didn't want it enough or I'm not working hard enough and I think we have to step out of that that and try and find a way to, to look the other way and go, okay, well, I'm, I am actually working hard enough and I do actually want it enough and I also need to recognise that this is actually grief and I need to find a way to process that as well. 
A hundred percent. You know, I think, you know, unfor- you know, making a baby is, is one of the things in life we just actually have no control over. We as humans, especially high functioning humans, like to have control and, you know, we have certain amount of control over how we progress in our career and, and the type of husband or partner that we you know, eventually end up with, you know, the type of, like you said, the type of house, you know, all of these things in our life. But that is the one thing that we really don't have control over. And 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 I think a lot of the time that can that need to control the timeline of a, of a baby really comes from a place of fear, doesn't it? It's 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 fear that you'll and, never become a mum. And it's it's never more exacerbated or brought under the spotlight than at times like Christmas when you're meeting up with family and friends and your sister who's already got two children and you always imagined you were going to raise your children side by side or your you you know your aunt that you haven't seen all year that thinks it's about time you had a baby or you know all sorts of different triggers come up around Christmas time and um, you know, it might be the, the Christmas party and you've been working with these people all year and then now you're having a relax and you're everyone's having a beer and you choose a water and everyone goes, oh, I've got something to tell us. And you're like, if only I had something to tell you. Like, I wish I had something to tell you, but I don't. And so that was kind of the whole reason we came together tonight and we, we really wanted to, to pull this webinar together because certainly for me anyway, I felt like I was in that on my own and I knew there were other people doing it, but when I was in the minute, in the moment with all those people, I was completely alone. And even my partner who was going through it at the same time, it didn't affect him in the same way. It didn't. It wasn't a constant monologue in his head or a constant fear of the next question or the next conversation or how I might get out of it. Um and so I, I thought it was really important to come together and, and try and help people with some t- tips and tricks and tools to take into the next couple of weeks. 100%. You know, I was exactly the same. Like I used to lock myself in the house, you know, like because I, I was just, I couldn't face, you know, the questions and the, and the, you know, the, you know, you go to to family functions and there's there's pregnancy or there's little children running around and these are highly triggering situations and they just magnify the emotions. So I think, you know, planning is key. You know, having a strategy is key and that will help you reduce the overwhelm, you know, the feelings of the stress and the anxiety and the fear and all these emotions that just brew up inside and just paralyze you on the spot. And I think that number one, sitting down before the holiday season starts and really understanding what functions you'll be expected to be at, you know, number one, do you have to be at that event? You know, if you can't face it, can you just perhaps be really open and vulnerable and say look this is the situation you don't have to overshare you can share as much as you like but I just I can't be there my emotional state doesn't allow me the space to be there you know as much as I'd really love to be there for you I just can't you know 99% of people will be that's totally fine are you okay is there something we can do you know it's it's, I think people don't know what they don't know. And I think with fertility, we often feel so alone because we don't feel we can share or we don't feel people will understand. And, and you know, a lot of the time people don't understand because they haven't been in the situation. But if you can just share something to let them know what's going on, most but of the, the time... Trouble, the trouble with that can be that human beings intrinsically are uncomfortable with other people's sadness we all are and so we try to make people feel better and the way we do that is by saying stupid things that are so unhelpful but we think that being helpful like oh it'll be okay i just know it no you don't how are you ever going to know that like you can't possibly know that or uh, the old favourite, you know, oh, I'm sure if you just relax. Right. Or, just, or just get drunk. Yeah, just, oh, it's okay. Have a good cry and then get drunk. That'll do it. Or um, why don't you just adopt? <laughs> or, 
you know, all the stupid things, put in the comments any stupid things that people have said to you and just it's really interesting when I get people to do this because they're all the same and we all think that it's the first time but you're young. Yes, that's a good one, Lucy. You're young. You've got heaps of time. Yeah, not if I wanted the four children that I always thought I was going to have, then I don't have heaps of time. And age is not the only thing that impacts fertility. Oh, I know someone who got pregnant after 10 years. Yeah, good. Oh, so do I. I did. But I'm really careful to say that to clients because it's it's not all that helpful. Um, and so I think I think it's really important to have some kind of a plan for those comments because even if you think, yep, cool, I'm up to it, I can go, I'll be good, everything will be fine, and then someone throws one of those at you, there's every chance that you might actually just lose your call. I think you're 100% right. And I think going in, like you said, going with a plan, like write down some of the comments that you find really triggering and write a response and keep them mm. in, and like, practice. with you. Yeah, put them in your wallet if you have to and, and really honestly like get them out. You know, it doesn't matter. Like if you have to do that, then you have to do that. But, you know, information and knowledge and, and preparation is power and it's key. You know, it, it will mean that you feel empowered and you feel in control and that then in turn reduces the overwhelm and the, the likelihood of you being extremely triggered and just going into that vortex or that hole of anxiety and fear and yeah. stress. I mean, it, it just allows you to to really, you know, keep your calm as best you can. Yeah. I mean, obviously, also giving yourself a break, I think, is and, and not expecting too much of yourself mm -hmm. over this time, just saying, you know what, this is obviously going to be a very triggering time for me and that's okay and I'm probably going yeah. to have heightened levels of stress. That's yeah. okay. You know, if I have a bit of a freak out or if I have a moment, walk away. Yep. And I always tell my clients, walk away. It takes 90 seconds to process an emotion. Give yourself 90 seconds to feel that emotion and then just do, there's a couple of quick exercises. Count from backwards from zero, uh, sorry, 10 to zero. It breaks your state in an instant. Or just do a breathing exercise. And then that gives you, brings your nervous system down enough to come back into the situation with a calm head. Mm. So, yeah. you know, just being very self-aware, you know, is so important in these situations mm. as well and really will, will help you. I think if we're thinking about, you know, responses that you might want to write down, it can be really helpful to hear um, some some other people's lines, some lines that other people use. So one of my favourites that I used to roll out all the time, which is a really gentle one, and, and I like I go from gentle responses to really smack in the face kind of responses, but one of my really gentle responses was always babies don't always come just because you want them to. And that tends to shush people really quickly because they go, oh, oh, yeah, okay, there might be more to this going on here that I know and the people who push again if you say that you say I'm really not comfortable discussing this here today um, it's really kind of a personal question and today's not the day and then walk away another thing I did um, when I was right in the depths of that was to have a, a, a person was my sister sometimes was my mum other times um, but just a person who knows the story who you can just go or make a face or a you know some kind of a sign that alerts them that you need someone to change the subject really quickly or ex extra extricate you from that conversation Lucy I just need you to come and help me in the kitchen for a minute great thank you you're out and you've got your ally who's helped you get out of that without creating a big issue um I will confess to having created a few big issues in my time um, because I just lost my shit, for want of a better word, and and said to people, you know, what are you actually asking me when you're asking that question? Like, what do you want to know? Do you want to know if we're trying or do you want to know when we're trying or do we need to text you when we're trying or, like, you know, what is it that you actually want to know? So you can go really deep in that. But I think... You know, Lucy's asked, um, said she feels so lonely not being understood by some people. And, and 
you know, having a friend who's who's parenting and that's really challenging because if your friend does not understand, they're not going to understand. It doesn't matter how well you try and explain it to them, they're not going to get it. So you have to choose your times to be around those people. And the reality is, unfortunately, some friendships are just going to cool for a while before they come back. Um, other friendships might grow really strong because, you know, I remember my one of my best friends, she used to ring me all the time and say, this is really sad for you, but I'm also happy and I can have both of those emotions at the same time. And neither of them cancel each other out. And that was really validating to me. And that's, yeah, I think, you know, Lucy, I, I think that you, I mean, everyone deals with emotions in different ways. Like some people can really understand people's, you know, it, it's kind of like when somebody dies, there are the, 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 the loved ones that really are there for support and can handle you sitting in your grief and sitting in your sadness and others can't they they distance themselves because they can't handle sitting with you in that type of grief and it, it's very similar you know for obviously fertility as well a lot of some people they don't understand what they don't understand and some people can't handle it and that's okay you know that's their type of personality they will come back but in, in this moment and in this time of your life, you really need to surround your people, surround yourself with people who do understand, are able to support you sitting in your grief. You know, you don't have to, to people who just know that they don't have to say anything, that maybe you just need somebody to sit by you or just be there to listen. Well, just you check know, in what, occasionally. You know, I know this is a shit time for you. Are you okay? Yeah, and like, you know, is there any, sometimes that's enough. Can I bring you a meal? Like you know, when I was struggling, there were some nights. You know, my my well, he was my partner at the time. He was working FIFO. I didn't cook because I couldn't because I was in such mental disarray. You know, if somebody had have just knocked on my door and just said, "Here's a meal," like you know, you're right. You need somebody to just. It's the mm. small things like that that. You don't even really know that you need, um, mm. but it's. I think it's it's to surround yourself with people like that is really important, and not be discouraged when people do distance themselves because if they yeah. are good friends, they will come back to you. But in that moment in time, they're probably just not emotionally capable to help you, and that's okay. And but, and I think the the sharing or the having an ally or a person who can you know, I need you in the kitchen or can you come and help me with this or whatever, that's that's really empowering but also can be a bit scary. So pick the person carefully because if you pick the wrong person, whoever you tell, unfortunately, about your infertility, whoever you tell then feels like they've kind of got a golden ticket to ask you about it whenever they want to and whenever every time you meet and it can run the risk of becoming a topic of conversation every time you see each other. So it's really important to create some boundaries around that. Look, I'm talking about this now because it's important to me that you know what I'm going through, but I also need you to understand that I don't want to talk about it all the time. So please, if you could just wait for me to bring it up again, that'd be great. You know, just create some little boundaries like that. Now, there's another Lucy. There's obviously a lot of Lucy's in this group tonight, which is awesome. Um, from your perspective, what additional support or understanding would you appreciate from healthcare professionals and fertility clinics during the Christmas season, recognising the unique experience of IVF patients? Thinking from an IVF perspective, lots of IVF clinics close over Christmas. Um, in Australia, the Medicare safety net resets on um, at the end of December, which means for those not in Australia, that's an extra um, level of funding that people can get towards their IVF cycles. So there's a big race into the finish line to try and just get one more cycle um, in before the end of the year. And so I think from an IVF clinic perspective, it's really hard to juggle that with making people feel rushed and like they're just one an, a number and you know, that kind of adds to the trauma of having to do IVF at all. Um, I don't know the answer to that. I don't know how you manage that, but I think it's a, um, 
it's it's an issue to be aware of that people are busy leading into Christmas, they're busy with all the Christmas parties and they're trying to squeeze in a cycle before the end of the year. Um, there's a lot of there's a lot of opportunity for extra support. So if you have extra support people on your staff, if you have counsellors on your staff, making them more available to people, doing a few extra check-ins, um, if you're connected to a fertility coach or you have other support people within your network, even if they're not employed with the IVF clinic, but within the network, have their cards available and around for people to find and reach out to um, when they're, they're, they're dealing with, with the lead up to Christmas. Do you, do you have anything to add to that, Louise? What do you think? Yeah, I mean, I, I agree, obviously, from a medical perspective. I think, you know, um, Christmas time is a very busy time. Uh, stress levels are an all-time high. And I'm not opposed to, you know, I don't, I, I think we, when we're on our journey to try and have a baby, we just push through cycle after cycle, month after month, because we believe if we keep going, keep going, keep going, then IVF is the answer and eventually it has to work. It's a numbers game. And sometimes it doesn't work. You know, that's just a fact of life. And I believe that if we're pushing on month after month and there's no, we're getting the same result, we're not, falling pregnant, staying pregnant and delivering a healthy baby, then I believe we need to stop and really have a look at what else could be going on behind the scenes. So rushing to do that last cycle before Christmas, I'm definitely against. I think it's I, a I'm against thing. it too, but it's really hard to tell people. I, I've well, you know, my, my client list has just exploded in the last month. People desperate to see me before Christmas, desperate to check in on their last cycle before the end of the year. And I'm like, you know, there's actually not a lot I can do in the space of one or two weeks because it takes three months to, to mature an egg ready for collection. And it takes not quite three months to, to grow a sperm. If you want to be making the most out of your cycle, you actually need to focus on presenting the lab with the best raw materials that you can possibly produce. And the best way to do that is to spend three months focusing on nurture, nourish and protect. It's not just about what you eat. It's not just about eating the perfect fertility diet and not stressing. It's about really encompassing this holistic nurture, nourish and protect. So we're nurturing the eggs and sperm, we're nourishing them with good foods and heaps of antioxidants and lots of lovely stories and 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 lots of, you know, nourishment and we're protecting them from environmental chemicals obviously, but also from all the negative thoughts and the negative stuff and the the, the all the 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 stuff the, the stress for want of a better word but I don't mean stress but it, it, just have nurture nourish protect in your head all the time and, and Lucy said I've had this three months holistic thing even more but did not work I feel hopeless look it, and and that's not going the nurture nourish protect and three months stuff is not about making a perfect egg or perfect sperm to make a baby it's about finding ways to cope with this I really want to use a very Australian terminology, but this shitstorm that is IVF and, and you know, balancing all of that with your friend who's about to have their second baby and, you know, another friend who's been struggling for five years and, you know, all these different things that you're trying to manage. Um, you know, I, I think fertility starts a long time before we actually start trying. And I think we all need to really understand that and, and realise that. And I think the reason that a lot of us are kind of push, push, pushing is because we're scared. And, you know, it, it is okay to take the foot off the pedal, especially for one month. It doesn't matter how old you are. You know, one month is not going to make any difference. You know, it doesn't matter if you're 35, 45, whatever. Like, just because you don't get that cycle in before Christmas doesn't mean that you've missed the boat completely. It might even mean that you just 
take the pedal off enough to be able to give yourself some space to have a look at what else is going on in your life that might be preventing you from moving forward on your journey or keeping you stuck. There's a lot of emotional stuff, you know, and that emotional stuff, the stories that you're telling yourself, I'm too old, I'm never going to become a mum, my my body has failed me, I've failed my partner, you know, all of this stuff. Like if you're telling yourself that over and over and over in your mind every day, you incantate that into your gut, into your nervous system. The way our brain works, it has no other option but to believe you. So if you're doing an IVF cycle but you're telling yourself these stories, it's very hard to move forward. So, you know, it's, it's, it's about okay, let's take a step back. Let's really look at what could be going on with generational trauma. You know, what's happened in the family beforehand? Have I taken on this story, these these patterns? You know, could that potentially have something to do with it? You know, and then, all right, I need to change this story. I need to create a new empowering story for myself. And I need to do all the other stuff as well. And this doesn't just take three months. It could take for some time, you know, healing is a never ending journey. And I think babies come in the divine timing when they're meant to come. You know, sometimes it takes a month to fall pregnant. Sometimes it takes people 10 years. But, you know, I bet Lucy, you know, and for me it was, and, you know, not one of my clients that has fallen pregnant and delivered a healthy baby looks back on their journey and says, my baby didn't come at the exact right time. The journey was hell, absolutely. But you can look at your struggle as an opportunity for healing and for growth. That's so interesting, Lou, because lots of people will say and certainly said to me, everything happens for a reason, it'll work out the way it's supposed to. And I wanted to punch them in the head, right? Absolutely. I'm not a violent type, but <laughs> it was nearly enough. <laughs> but I, I find myself sometimes saying it now and I recognise how annoying it is because I hated it so much when people said it to me. And when I say it, I don't say everything happens for a reason you're being punished for something you used to do. I don't mean that. I mean one day you'll be 60, hopefully, you know, all things being equal. And when you get to 60, I want you to turn around and look back and go, oh, I kind of get that now. That was kind of shit, but I sort of understand why it happened that way. And and you'll be wherever you need to be. And it, pro- it may not be where you thought you were going and it almost certainly won't be how you thought you were going to get there, but there will come a day where you go, Oh, okay, this is where I was going. Okay, I didn't realise that at the time, but now I can see why all of that happened because this is where I needed to be. And that happens to me on a daily basis. Every day when I'm seeing clients, I think, I get it now. I understand why I had to go through that stuff because now I can help you go through that. Because, And I'm sure you do the same thing, Lou. It, I, I sort of, it was shit when it was happening but it means that I can do what I do now. And uh, that's I'm, I'm so grateful for that. 100%. And I think for me, like I was living in victim mentality for five and a half years of my journey because why me? Every You know, I, I can't get past why are there people falling pregnant after one month yep. and I'm yep. not like how dare they, how, how could this happen to me, victim mentality. And then when I started to do the inner work, for lack of a better word, and really understand what was happening with me and, and start to heal my mind and my body did there was a there was a, a switch and it, it turned into a reframe of not why me but I see this as an opportunity for learning for growth for healing and for the most important thing to become the best version I can be for my future children because if I hadn't had a fall and pregnant when I was 30 when I started I would not be the amazing mother that I am to my kids because I would not be have learnt the lessons I need mm. needed to learn and, and I would have passed on all of the generational trauma that yep. I 
was still carrying. So I look back then and I go, thank God that I didn't fall pregnant because all the stuff that I would have passed on to my kids and I wouldn't be here talking to you, Lucy, and, you know. I don't, I don't have so much of that. I would have been really grateful if my first pregnancy just kind of hung around. That would have been really awesome. I don't have a lot of that, but I, I get what you mean. Um, let's right. look at some of these questions here. Can you discuss specific self-care practices that have helped you? I tried meditation, just not work. I can't meditate either. If someone tells me to meditate, I would rather stick a pin in my eye. But... When I talked to someone about meditation, I discovered that I actually do do it every day, but I don't sit with my legs crossed and my hands go home. I don't do any of that crap. I stand in the shower for an extra few minutes and I'm conscious of where I am right now. So, and that's really all meditation is, is just stopping for a minute and going, okay, I'm focusing on my breathing. I'm breathing in, I'm breathing out. The water's running down past my ears so I can't hear anything outside and I'm just going to try to clear my mind as much as I can. That's one that I do and I probably don't do it as often as I should. Another one is um, habit hacking to make myself move my body intentionally every day. I'm not an exerciser. I do not like to exercise. I do not understand endorphins. I don't get any of that stuff. Um so I have to habit hack myself into it. So one of the things I do, uh, or I certainly did when I had gestational diabetes when I was pregnant and it was imperative that I move my body every day, was to set a timer on my phone for five minutes and just literally walk out of the house. As soon as I got home, put my keys down, walk out. I didn't change into workout gear or anything. I just walked away for five minutes and the minute the timer went off, I turned around and I walked home again. And I didn't take headphones, I didn't, you know, listen to a podcast or do any, I counted the cars or I looked at the the weeds on the street or noticed who was coming home or who was going or whatever, just whatever flowed through my brain at the time. Um, that's another one. A third one is one that I actually learned from Dr. Julie, who's a psychologist on on TikTok probably, um, but she, she talks about letting your thought, instead of your thoughts are like a super highway and instead of standing out in the middle of the highway trying to stop every car to investigate who's driving it and who's in it, visualise yourself stepping out and standing on the edge of the highway and watching the thoughts just go past. You don't have to interrupt all of them. You don't have to understand all of them. You can just let them slide past. There, there are a couple that, that I use quite regularly. What about you, Lou? I think getting back to the breathing, I mean, and you like what you were talking about, the shower, I mean, that's that's about grounding, isn't it? Because when we're in the, living mm. in the overwhelm, we are, our brain is going a 1,000 miles an hour and, you know, you cannot meditate. You can't sit in stillness because your nervous system and your brain is going 100 miles an hour. So you need to first of all calm the nervous system and really ground yourself. So that is an amazing way to, to ground yourself. A breathing exercise, really simple, is in for eight, hold for two, and out for ten. Do that ten times. And I'll pass out. <laughs> You've completely changed your state. And if yeah. you can do that when you feel like, you know, that tightness in your chest or you feel your stress is rising or you feel like you're, you know, about to, you know, you just feel like something's about to explode do that breathing exercise it completely calms your nervous system it starts to ground you you can start to think clearly again and then you can you know like you said do a, a, a you know like a visualization which is the shower ritual or something like that you know take yourself to a place where you know Think about that one time when you were truly happy, like in life. There's always one time, you know, you've got to, when you just couldn't stop laughing or, you know, there was, you were sitting with your partner or, you know, you were walking the dog or, you know, you were, you know, with your best friends, you know, the, you know a family member, whatever it is, you know, someone has, you know, one time in their life when they just were just in that place of true happiness and joy really feel that feeling and and that's a, that's a big ask when you're when you're in the in the depths of of infertility 
um, that that's a really hard memory to find. Um, 100%. And, and it takes but, a lot of practice. It takes practice. You need to and, and really, all of this stuff, really practice it. And, and all of this stuff, like that's the thing, like this, this, you know, all of this stuff, it, it does take practice, but you can do it. You know, it's really important to do it because you have to connect back into your joy. You and have the fact to that you're here it. watching this is a step further than I ever made it because I never would have thought to reach out for help. I was fine. I was going to manage it all myself. I was fine because I was so in control of everything else in my life so the fact that you're here watching this is an amazing step in the right direction and any little thing that you pick up from what we're talking about here even if it's just having an ally at the Christmas party or being able to practice the sentence babies don't just come don't ever don't come just because you want them oh my god don't say it like that say it you know much more clearly um but pre even if it's just those things or, or lose, you know, breathing 10, 8, eight to two, 10, it was 8 to 10. Um, even if that's the only thing you take away from tonight, add on to that, I had the strength to go to this webinar and listen to this webinar and that's, I, I need a pat on the back for that too because that's a big step. Can I add just one thing which we haven't talked about, which I really wanted to talk about, taking the focus off this year the, the stress and the anxiety of how you're going to cope with with all these these functions and leaning into to what you have accomplished this year like even it doesn't matter you know what have you done that you're really yep. proud of yourself for you know it could be something in your career or it could be you've got a new partner it could be that you bought a new dog or you know maybe you went on a holiday or, or maybe it's something really little like I don't even know like whatever you know write down a couple of things that you're really proud of yourself for. Like, what have you done really well this year? You know, really focusing on the positive side of things, you know, and, and this again is obviously, it's, it's easier said than done when you're in the depths of it, but just changing your state once and little baby steps, you start to gain momentum. So like, just, if you can just come up with one thing that you did really well, or one thing that you love about yourself, or one thing that you're really grateful for, and then come up with another, you know, and you might be able to come up with another, you know, and, and it might not happen that day, but, you know, the next day you might think of something else. Like it's small baby steps and it's like a snowball effect, isn't it? You've just yeah. got to take, it's like the gym. You go to the gym first time. Well, you don't, some people, if you mean. Well, you don't. Some people, well, I don't either. But some people, <laughs> like, you know, you go to the gym, you decide you want to get fit, you're really yeah. intimidated. Yeah you know, everyone's better than you, but you keep going back or, yeah. you know, whatever it is, it takes time. You start to build up your strength, you get fitter and you get fitter and, you know, you start to really enjoy it or whatever it is, you know. The other form. thing on, on, that, on that same pathway, the other thing I think that really, really helps going into these things is if you have a bit of a plan for what you're going to do in January. So, Either you've made an appointment with a fertility specialist. If you're in the group of people who are still just trying and you haven't sought out any help yet, then book an appointment with someone. If you don't, if you end up not needing it, you can cancel it. That's easy. But if you've got an appointment, you don't have to get to January and try and make an appointment and not get one until March or April. And then it's sort of, you know, but if you ring now, you might get one in February. So book the appointment. Um Start to plan that preparation for conception so that if you do end up needing IVF, the raw materials that you're presenting to the lab are the, the best that, that you can do um, or, you know, as good as they can be. Um, so start that preparation. Start investigating this nurture, nourish, protect thing that I talk about all the time and and working out what fits into your lifestyle and what you can do. Um, and think about what might be different in January. How can you make 2024 different to 2023? If 2023 feels like it was really heavy and it was awful and that the outcomes were not great and it was not what you wanted and you're miserable, how can you make that different? Because you're, you're the master of your destiny. And yes, it feels like you're not when it comes to fertility because you can't control that, but you can control how you manage that. And so reach out for the help and support you need reach out and book an appointment with a psychologist or with a hypnotherapist or with a fertility educator 
or with you know someone book the appointment and and know that you've got a bit of a plan to try and make 2024 better in some way learn to meditate learn to knit learn to cross stitch do something different so that 2024 is different 100 percent. i think you know you've got to look back and, and learn from 2023 it wasn't your year okay well, what can you do differently like you said you know perhaps you know it's well they say it's the you know, if you're doing the same thing over and over and over again and it's not working, then something needs to change in order for, for your situation to change. Yep. So what you're if you if you're not pregnant, then something different probably has to happen. So really empower yourself with knowledge, make the appointments, reach out to people. You you know, it, it it's okay to ask for help. It takes a village to make a baby. You know, it took a village to make my babies. It took a village to make Lucy's babies. It takes a village to make a lot of babies. And if I had have just kept on Which saying. Which feels heavy because it's really nice if it can be kind of a private thing. Um, but, you know, it isn't always. Um, don't have the strength to keep trying anymore. Don't know what to plan in January. I feel lost. I'm on sick leave. Um, even anxious to go back to work. I'm not fulfilled at work because never change role because of fertility. Okay, something needs to change for you, Lucy, something. And whether that's reaching out for some sessions with Lou, um, whether that's finding a, a psychologist to go and talk to, perhaps you already have one, maybe you need a different one, um, whether it's saying, okay, you know what, I'm just not going to try for, for until March. I'm going to have my next cycle, but I'm not going to do that until March. And between now and March, I'm going to teach myself to make yogurt or make cheese or do something completely different um, and change things, change the, the whole dynamic, the whole aura. The I can't think of any of the right words, but Lou will have them. Just change, shift, a shift. Reframe reframe how you're looking at things you know sit back you know give yourself the space and the time so okay you know I'm you know I'm in this hole now I, I need help okay well what's not you know I need some space to live I mean the body keeps the score the body yeah. and the mind always have the answers if we stop and we listen so maybe it's about giving yourself the space to kind of sit with yourself and say what does my gut tell me to do here like you know who do I need to go and see that I've been too scared to go and see or haven't been aware of, of you know who's out there you know I, I, a lot of my clients come to me and they're like I wish I had have seen you sooner because I was I hear that every too... day every single day I hear someone say why didn't I know about you three years ago I'm like I can't put more posts on Instagram I'm sorry <laughs> I don't know why you didn't know about me earlier. <laughs> There's nothing to be scared of. There's nothing to fear. There's nothing to be feel like you failed. You know, it, it's okay to reach out. And you know what? At the end of the day, when you are, you know, you, you want to look back and feel like you've done everything that you need to do and, and what that looks like for everyone is different everyone's journey is different so who they have to see or what they need to do is different only you know what you need to do but obviously you need to do something different in order to start moving forward absolutely so you need to I think it's really important to sit with yourself and and and, and say okay well what is it that I need next year to ensure that I you know and, next and year is even my year what is it that I need next year feels big, feels like a lot. It's like, oh, my God, it's a whole new year and it's fresh and it's new and, and then you're going to spend January bom being bombarded by all of the Instagram and TikTok and Facebook, new year, new you kind of palaver. Just remember that, that your body actually knows the answer already if you just give it a chance to tell you. And so... When we keep coming in with more things that we're trying to control on top of everything, if we actually just step back for a minute and go, like I said before, okay, yep, I am going to keep trying, but I'm not going to do it until March. And between now and March, I'm going to do the toxins program and reduce my exposure to environmental toxins. That might help my fertility. It might, you know, it's definitely going to make a difference to everything else in my life as well. So, and it might have the knock-on effect of helping my fertility. So I'm actually going to do the, doc 
the the detox program um, for the next six weeks and then see how I feel after that. But I can't, I'm not doing IVF while I'm do, until I finish that. Or, you know, set yourself sh shorter targets, like the five minutes out, five minutes back. You know, I'm not going to join a gym and lose 30 kilos, but I'm going to walk for five minutes today. And I'm going to see if I can do that for five days or four days or three days. Set yourself small little habits to hack so that when you get six weeks down the track and you turn back, you go, shit, I actually did that five days a week for six weeks. You know, make it little things and then this time next year will feel completely different. You know, 100%. I think it, it, it's the little it's the little steps that gain the momentum. You know, you can't look at the at the mountain. You've really just got to put one foot in front of the other. And I think creating the space to listen to your body, your body keeps the score. It always does. But we don't listen because we're scared. And that's okay. There's, you know, that's very, very natural. And it happens to all of us. Like I was so scared that I manifested celiac disease and depression and chronic fatigue and, and all of these things in my body because I was so scared but when I gave myself the space to stop and say okay well what do I really need the answers came and no it wasn't you know it didn't just happen immediately it's been a very long journey but I got there in the end and I'm still you know it's still a journey but you know I just put one foot in front of the other what do I have to do tomorrow this is a great question what do I have to do today to move myself forward Ask yourself, get up in the morning, do the Lucy shower routine. The morning ritual is key, you know, setting yourself up for bed. a good day. Always make your bed. Always Have make your bed. Have you seen that? Have you seen that um, Instagram or it's video? I don't know if it's Instagram or TikTok or where it is, but of the um, general saying always make your bed. Do. It's because a even if you were, Even if you achieve nothing else in the whole day, when you get home, I've made my bed. I'm, I've done one thing today. I have achieved something. And it sets the ball rolling for the rest of the day. And your room looks neater when your bed's made. Hey, we're nearly at the end of our time and I'm going to run out of time. Has anyone got any more questions for us before we disappear? Here comes Caroline to come in and join us. Sure. Thank you so much, uh, ladies, for joining us today, for sure. And it's been a great and much needed discussion. So thank you both. I think that you provided lots of tips and examples on what you can actually do. And thank you, everyone, for joining us. And as Lucy uh, already said, if you have any other questions, this is your time, the final call. But of course, as already, again, Lucy Louise told you, if you wish to reach out to them both, um, I think that you proved today that you have lots and plenty of experience and lots of plenty of um, positivity, which, which definitely um, is important and much needed. So uh, you can reach Someone out. Someone did ask the them. question, how does one become a fertility educator and fertility yeah. empowerment coach? I'm going to answer for me first sure. as a fertility <laughs> educator. I made that role up for myself um, because I really struggled for a couple of years trying to work out what to call myself because I'm not working clinically as an embryologist anymore. I'm definitely not a fertility coach. I haven't done any coaching courses or anything. But I want people to understand their fertility, which means I'm a fertility educator. Um, yeah. And I like to empower people who are going through IVF. So I'm an IVF patient advocate. Lou, how does one become a fertility empowerment coach? Well, I guess I am trained in the modalities of NLP, which is neuro-linguistic programming, timeline therapy, hypnotherapy, and fertility coaching. So I... I kind I combine all those modalities under the coaching banner, I guess, and fertility empowerment coach for me was a logical name because all of these modalities really empower you from a mindset point of view on your fertility journey to take control. So for me, I guess, you know, that's where it all came from. It obviously started with my journey and my understanding of the mind-body connection and, and then when combined with the psychological side of things and all these modalities that you, you get a, um, a fertility empowerment coach. Um, and that's, that's why 
um, you know, when, when I, the work that I do with my clients, I help them understand what's going on. And then I say, right now, what we need now is a great fertility specialist, right? Here's a couple of different ones that I trust and send people to. We also might need a nutritionist or a dietitian. Here's two or three that I know really well. I think maybe a psychologist could be beneficial or a hypnotherapist. Someone asked about someone who'd had seven miscarriages. My first step there is to say, we need to just hold up for a minute and we need to go and talk to someone who can help us with that and I actually think hypnotherapy is so beneficial in recurrent miscarriage we need to check all the medical boxes too but that's just super important so I think we sort of cross over and into cross refer and interplay quite a lot don't we Lou well, actually, I, I send a lot of my clients your way as well because a lot of my clients come to me, they're in the, in the midst of IVF, but they're not happy with their fertility specialist or they're not, from a medical perspective, are confused about the information that they're provided. And I don't have a medical background in the fertility space. So I can't comment on that sort of thing. So that's when I will refer them to Lucy and say, you know what? Lucy is your girl. She's the person that will be able to to really point you in the right direction. You know, is that fertility specialist? Are they giving you the right information? You know, I had a late, I had a client recently, and she was being directed to surrogacy, and she was only thirty five. So I sent her Lucy's way. I was like, mm, I don't know. Like, I'm not a medical professional, but I don't know whether we need to go there right now. And her fertility and, specialist. And I. Must clarify, I'm also not a medical doctor, but I have certainly worked alongside them for a long time, but I can definitely tell people about their embryos and about what's happening with that embryo development and the things that they've done beforehand that are impacting that. And so from that perspective, I can give them a whole lot more foundational knowledge about what's going on so they can go back to their doctor with these questions, not these questions. Yes. Um, and know whether they want to keep seeing that doctor or not. Anyway, there's a lot more there. You and I could keep gas bagging for hours, I think, Lou. <laughs> but I, I think, you know, the, the one thing we can all take from that is, you know, it, it, you have to look at your fertility holistically, don't you? And, you and, and it does take a team sometimes. So, you know, sit in the space, give yourself the space you need to work out who that team is going to be for you, who can help move you forward towards your dreams of holding that baby in your arms. Yes. Like that's, that's what we all want at the end of the day. So, yep. yep. Thank you so much. And uh, I think that we will be finishing for today. But uh, again, it's been great to have you. Louis Sawitsky and Louis C. Lines were our guest speakers today. And I'm really looking forward to some more uh, events with you. It's been a great session. And thank you, everyone, again, for joining uh, wherever you are. Um, thank you for sharing not only um, your stories, but also uh, for asking all the questions. And I do hope and I do believe that it was uh, helpful uh, for you as well. And I just want to add that we will be back today. Actually, this uh, is our first webinar, but today we will also talk about non-invasive PGTA. So if this is something that is interesting for you and you would like to learn more, join us. We will be there with Dr. Uh, Jose Garcia España at uh, 7 p.m. London time. Uh, so if you can join us. Thank you, ladies. Uh, it's been great to have you. And uh, well, see you back here hopefully quite soon. Have a good evening and have a good day, everyone as well. Thank you. Take care. Bye. 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 Bye.